Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and implemented this interesting looking image view via the shapeable image view, a pretty powerful class that was brought out in the material design library. So if you missed it, go ahead and check it out. If this is of interest to you, uh, there's some good content on it. And in today's episode, we are going to cover creating our first bottom sheet dialogue fragment. It's a very popular thing in the world of Android, but specifically we're going to use it to surface some more information about our episodes here. We can see on the actual character details, we have a scrolling carousel of episodes. When we click it, nothing really happens. And then if we go ahead and browse all of the episodes that come back from the API, we click it, nothing happens, but this would also be a good place to go ahead and present the bottom sheet. So we're gonna make use of it in both of these locations. Behind the scenes here, I've modified a bunch of files and I basically just got all of the boring stuff out of the way here. So inside of our episode repository, we have created a get episode by ID function, which will basically allow us to create a domain layer episode object based on the ID that we got. So when we click uh, this particular episode or in the character details, fragment a particular episode, we will pass that ID in and we will fetch it. A quick side note though, I had to modify our episode model because we didn't have the characters list here. Uh, even though we had it in the response model, we didn't have it in the domain model. So I went ahead and did everything I needed to as far as updating this model here, updating our mapper class here, and then updating the character mapper as well to have everything function properly. But point being, just know we have a single function that we can go ahead and invoke to get an episode that has all of the characters attached to it because taking a look at our API here, when we make a call for a particular episode, we can see that there is a, an array of characters, and this is something that I would wanna present in the bottom sheet. So I've just gone ahead and taken care of all of the nitty gritty stuff here. We've done it plenty of times before, so I figured I could do it off camera here. And then I've also built out a simple layout here. We can go ahead and enhance this a little bit. Uh, pretty simple stuff, we just have a few text views up here, a little view separating some stuff, and then we have a little carousel of the characters, which is why we needed that information in our domain model. So just gone ahead and created all of this simple, or I guess straightforward, or, or boilerplate stuff in order to go ahead and implement our actual work here. So I've created an empty episode detail view model that just has the repository, and then we have here where we can kick off our implementation where I've created a basic episode detail bottom sheet fragment that doesn't extend from fragment. Instead, it extends from the bottom sheet dialogue fragment. Now, the important part to note here is that this base class here actually extends a dialogue fragment, which will eventually go all the way down to extending a fragment. So as far as lifecycle goes, as far as what you would expect to have available to you in the world of fragments, all of that is relevant, all of that is applicable here in our bottom sheet implementation, so we can treat it as such. And so quickly implementing some of our view binding here that we have uh, come to know here. So we override our on create view, we set up our binding here, we then uh, also null that out in on destroy view here. So everything works exactly as we would expect like a fragment, so we can just get that stuff out of the way right here. But now at this point, we are in our own view created. We are within the scope of you know being able to update our UI and, and we are about to be presented to the user. So in order to do so, we need to populate this information here in our UI. So let's go ahead and jump into our view model here. Let's create an internal live data that we're going to make use of. And so we've seen this before, we have a private variable here for the mutable live data so that we can mutate it. And then we expose just an instance of the live data so that our view layer cannot modify the data layer here directly. So pretty simple stuff here, pretty self-explanatory at the moment. And then we're just going to need a function here to fetch the particular episode that we've gone ahead and or, or buy its ID. And in here, we will make use of our view model scope, our Kotlin coroutines to go ahead and launch our 
suspend function that we've built out in our repository. So this will actually get us a nullable episode. We will call repository.getEpisodeById. We'll pass in the information we have. And then we can go ahead and post this information here to our live data, which will eventually get observed in the fragment level here. So if we bounce back out here, we can create our or get our view model instance here, which is going to be the episode, episode detail view model. And then inside of our on view created, we can go ahead and attach our, our listener to the episode live data. We will observe it with the view lifecycle owner so that we are lifecycle aware. Let's go ahead and just rename this really quickly. And we can go ahead and check to say if our episode is null, we will handle our error state somehow. And then otherwise here, we have all the information we need in order to present this information. So we can say the binding dot episode name. And so we very quickly just went ahead and populated the different text views with the information that we have inside of our episode domain model. And now we need to actually create our little scrolling list there for the epoxy controller that we've gone ahead and built this little guy here. So if we just very quickly create ourselves an epoxy controller, we will get that done. We'll call this the episode detail epoxy controller. It's gonna be a weird name because it's not really the details as much as it is the characters, but that's okay. And sure, let's go ahead and force the uh, characters character list inside of our constructor here. So we'll take a list of characters here. And then in our build models function, we will go ahead and very easily loop over our characters list here. And we will add each element to the list. So we'll create a little epoxy model here. And so very simply, we have a character epoxy model here that takes an image URL and a name. It's really all the information that we need to just get this up and running. So we're just gonna leave it like that for now. And then inside of here, we'll simply just create one of these for each character that we have. We will pass in the image URL being it.image and name being it.name. We'll give this an ID, of course, as it.id. And then we will say add to this for our epoxy controller. We'll rename this here to be character just to be more explicit. And then we'll also just clean that up really quickly. And that will do it here for our episode detail epoxy controller. So we can go ahead and make use of this by saying binding dot epoxy recycler view, set controller and build models. And inside of here, we will pass the uh, episode detail epoxy controller, passing in the character list that exists on our episode uh, domain model right here. So something quick to note here, set controller and build models will not only set the controller to the epoxy recycler view, but it will also invoke the request model build uh, function, which basically tells epoxy to go ahead and run its diff and build all of the models that it needs to. So it's a pretty easy way to just kind of do that operation all in one. But something to note here, this means that every single time we observe a new change in our live data, that we are going to be setting a brand new controller because we are constructing this object right here. And in an event where we would be receiving updates to this information, this is gonna this could cause the screen to snap and jump, but in our case, it's safe because we are not really going to be receiving updates to it once we fetch it once and the episode is non-null. So we should be uh, good there. And then the last little bit here, well, we are going to need to go ahead and configure this with our nav graph here. So let's get that done really quickly. Okay, and so here we have it. I'm just gonna go ahead and build this so that everything, all the generated files come through but we've defined a new fragment again because it's a bottom sheet, because it's a bottom sheet fragment, everything works the same. 
So we've just gone ahead and defined a new fragment that exists here inside of our nav graph. Uh, you know, we've given it the ID, we've given it the name to point to our particular fragment that we've gone ahead and implemented right here. And then we've also gone ahead and just added in an action here to go from our list fragment, uh, basically this page here, into this bottom sheet that we've gone ahead and created here. So we are gonna let this build and looks like it just finished. So that's wonderful. We will get our, our safe args here, the arguments that are passed in here because we need that episode ID. So we're gonna go ahead and do that by the nav args, which we've accomplished before, we've worked with before. And then we just simply call view model fetch episode with the safe args dot episode ID. And I think that will about do it. So let's go ahead and give this a run and see where we end up. Okay guys, so two edits here. Um, I was just a bonehead here and didn't actually navigate. I never implemented that. So very quickly here inside of our episode list fragment, this guy right here, basically we've just attached a little callback to our list uh, epoxy controller so that when we click something, we will receive, uh, you know, this code will run here. So we basically just create our nav directions, we call find nav controller and navigate. And then I ran that, but it opened this screen as an entire, or the detail screen as an entirely like new fragment. And I realized that I made one small mistake here. Inside of the nav graph here, instead of defining the fragment as a fragment here with the slash fragment tag and whatnot, we actually have to define it as dialogue and that is because uh, we are inheriting from the bottom sheet dialogue fragment. If we just say fragment, it just tries to load it full screen like everything else here, uh, all of these other pages that we have going here or even this one. So it worked, but it didn't look proper. So I apologize about that. We do just need to denote it a little bit differently in the nav graph. However, once we click on it, it works, but it doesn't, right? Okay, so it worked. We can see that everything here you know, displays the correct information. We have our little scrolling list of all the characters here. Uh, we don't have an on-click on these characters, but that's okay in my opinion. Um, but we did see a little bit of like a jump in that process, and that's because we are not, uh, the recycler view is not at a particular height, or we don't, we don't tell this bottom sheet to extend to a particular height. And we can see here that the bottom of this little element here is basically touching pixel perfect to that next uh, or, or to the system bars there. So there is a little bit of UI cleanup that we can go ahead and do. However, I think this episode's gone on long enough. So I'm gonna cut it here uh, where we've gone ahead and at least gotten something on screen and at least implemented it as we should. But we will uh, pick it up from here in the next episode where we're just gonna clean this this stuff up and then we will also connect it up to the character details fragment because at the moment uh, we don't have this connectivity here so I'll show you how to create a global action where we're going to be able to basically reference the exact same fragment from two different fragments or, or the exact same action from two different fragments so I will catch you in the next one thanks for watching if you made it this far please do drop a like and subscribe if you notice you are not already I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.